On today's episode of Watch Jergo, tearing down a $20,000 supercar engine. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo and today, like I said, I'm here with my 20 thousand dollar r8 engine this is the bad one that came out of my old 2008 gated manual twin turbo r8 and of course it was down a cylinder now we have bore scoped this back in the day and i'm pretty sure there was a hole in the number eight piston honestly i don't even remember which side's number eight now and i have a buyer that wants the heads off this thing if it's any good so today our game plan is to try to take this thing down and uh see if the heads are any good if the heads are good, uh, I think I have a buyer for almost every piece of this engine and everything that I don't sell, I'm just gonna throw on eBay. So I was trying to sell it as a whole. I was offering a really good deal, like $2,000. Anybody could buy this thing and make money on it at $2,000, but uh, nobody wanted to take it down. Nobody wants to do the work. So I guess we're doing it here. And you guys get to see how bad it was and uh, just how crazy one of these engines is. First, we need to get it out of the box that uh, came in from Audi, the, the brand new one did at least get it on an engine stand and start laying out parts it shouldn't take too terribly long to tear this thing down that's my hope but we're gonna find out together so let's get it out of here So if you guys don't know anything about the 4.2 liter Audi R8 V8, uh, it's a dual overhead cam engine. It's direct injected with the injectors inboard, spark plugs and coils outboard here. Uh, obviously the crank pulley faces the back seats on the car and the transmission sits right back here where the engine stand would be. It's nice and compact. It does make pretty good power. People like the way it sounds. We're just gonna rip this thing apart and uh, see what it looks like inside. I'm assuming it's gonna look perfect, except for this cylinder here, not actually eight, it's uh, seven, as I wrote down there on our layout. This is the one that had all the issues. The cats were destroyed. It could have just been burning them up, but I do think that something serious happened. So, uh, hey, let's just start over here. So we're gonna just rip this thing apart. Um, most of it I'm gonna try to lay out for you guys, but some of it is just going on the floor. I didn't know you could put this many screws in a valve cover. Wow, these are plastic. I always thought these were metal. That's wild. Oh, they're very well done. There's the inside of the valve cover. It looks brand new. All the crankcase ventilation, everything looks great. Wow, the inside of the engine also looks brand new. As you'd kind of expect for this car only having 50,000, 54,000 miles on it, the lobes are incredible. These lobes get profiled in basically 3D. There's a normal cam lobe and then the sides are chamfered. They kind of roll off. That is impressive. Now we're gonna pull off the rear cover here, the timing chain covers. What is holding that on? RTV. This took massaging with a sledgehammer to get it off. There's our, wow, brand new looking timing chain covers inside. And oh man, this whole engine is just beautiful. I sure hope these heads aren't damaged. Time to pull the fuel rails out of here. Oh, wow. I've never seen that happen before. Wow, those are some super short DI injectors. All right, there's our first bank of fuel injectors there, the even cylinders. Also had to pull, this is probably oil pressure, maybe water temp, one of the two. It's a single wire, so I definitely think that that's uh, water temp. On to the next fuel rail. Ooh, 
Oops. None of the injectors came out on this one. That is unfortunate. Wow, how are you supposed to do this? There is no way to get a Torx driver in there. So these are T20s down here in the cam actuators, and you can sure get to the top ones. That's no problem, but you cannot get to the lower one. So there's one, here's the other. Well, this one's uh, not Torx. It's been replaced, it looks like, and they used an Allen because accessibility reasons. We can finally pull our cam actuators. Ah! There we go. Dump some oil in here. We'll pull all these out. Instead of having cam caps on the R8 engine, Audi used this integrated design and this huge piece right here is all of the cam caps with about a million fasteners in it. It runs all the way over here. You can see it basically encompasses everything. So I'm just gonna get in here and start pulling fastener after fastener. And by the end of it, the cams should be free. So let's get right to it. Actually, we'll probably start in the middle. There's that spring pressure. One bolt held all of it down, I'm impressed. All right, so this should be free now. Lots of RTV holding this thing on and uh, timing chains are holding the cams down. Getting this coolant crossover pipe off of here. Of course, it doesn't want to come off. There we go. And now we can pull off this water pump that's on the front of the engine here. It's actually OEM. All right, that should get that off. Of course, this water pump is shaft drive as well. It's probably got a gearbox in there. It's so oily, I can't turn it. We're pulling the cam variators off real quick. So it's a uh, M14 triple square, a monster of a socket. And of course, it's hard to break these loose without a lot of power. So we have the big Milwaukee impact on here. And I'm also holding it to make sure the engine doesn't turn. That is tight. Here we go again. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh wow, am I? I'm just covered, aren't I? I just took a uh, shower in oil, an Audi shower is what just happened. More oil than I've ever seen. And it just exploded out of the uh, solenoid hole there. So obviously we got it loose, but uh, we paid the price for getting that one loose. So we'll see if it repeats over here. Uh, I'm gonna hang on tight, see if I can stop it. All right, look at that, we stopped it. So we have all of our cam variator bolts out. Now we're gonna try to work these backwards very carefully, just like that, until they come off. Just rocking it back and forth, and it should come right off the end, and we'll have the cams loose. Man, the chains are not being friendly today. There we go. These guys, of course, look amazing. I'll lay these out. And a, another cam cap assembly can come off of here. Intake cam, exhaust cam over there. And again, intake and exhaust. And now, that we have all the cams out, 
we can finally pull the heads. So pulling the heads is gonna be a bit of a job, but we're basically at that point where I think we can get in here. So all we need is a big triple square and we can pull out. This is, uh, this head's held on by eight gigantic, let's see, I think these are some more M14 fasteners. The time has come. M12 triple square is what you need to pull the head bolts out of your uh, R8, in case you guys are keeping track. Basically every single thing, almost every bolt on this engine is T30. Couple T20s, and uh, of course have your triple square set handy. If you don't, you will be in trouble. But uh, M8, M10, M12, M14 so far, that's all I've needed to do everything on this engine. So now I think we are ready to pull the head. I don't see anything else in our way. The only thing I'm worried about right here is the chain. I need to make sure it will drop through the side of the head even though there's a little idler down inside there. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the bolts and do a little bit of wiggling and hopefully it works out. So we'll just kind of work our way out of on the head bolts. All the valves and valve springs are staying in as well. I don't wanna pull any of that apart. Let's just get this thing apart. Oh, Milwaukee, you never let us down. Good and faithful servant. I heard some noise. Let's try not to lose these rubber plugs over here. Something's still holding it on over here, and I don't know what. Oh, one screw. There's a T30 that's full of oil right there. That's the last thing holding it in. Let's try one more time. One thing I did find is the timing chain tensioner assemblies. These are assemblies, guys. Absolutely wild. They need to come out before the head can come off so the chain can drop. The gaskets look amazing. They came apart perfectly. Look at the wear on the shoes. There is none. You can't feel a single thing there. What an unbelievable engine. So there's some major wear, actually. That's pitted. Let me wipe it off. That shoe has seen some things. It's been hot started to pit out but up here it looks really good right where the chain really rides it's it's had a few issues but hey not bad for what this thing is and of course we have the driver's side head completely off this engine now it's sitting here it took me a minute to figure out exactly how to get the chains out but this assembly had to come off and then it's been put back in and now you can look inside the head here and see our combustion chamber and this head looks incredible not a single issue so Valves look good, surfaces look good. Uh, also, how's this shoe look? Oh wow, this is severely pitted on this one. There is some major wear. I will say this timing chain guide would have been replaced if we would have been able to rebuild this engine. That is the head on the Audi. Here in a minute, we might be able to give the thing a couple turns over and watch the pistons move, take a look at the cylinders. Uh, these pistons look great. The uh, cylinders look great. Yeah, there's some dirt that's fallen in when the head came off. These are coated cylinders. I've never felt anything so smooth in my life. Unbelievable. You can't feel crosshatch. It has like a micro coating. Normally in a nice cylinder, you would see the crosshatch in there from a hone being ran through it. But these tolerances are insanely tight. Also, look how cute they are. This powers a supercar. These tiny little bores. I mean, almost smaller than a 20 ounce bottle right there. The coating on the cylinders is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I've uh, hardly ever felt anything so smooth. <laughs> Last head bolts on the passenger side head. This is of course the one that matters, don't fall head. Whether the guy wants to buy it or not depends on this cylinder here. She's free. Here we go. Wow. There doesn't appear to be as much damage as I expected. Oh, this is the problem cylinder and it still looks great. I'm not seeing any issues here. I don't see any beat up valves. This is unbelievable. At that back cylinder has way less damage than I ever imagined. There is no hole in the piston. Now there is a ring seal issue. If you look at these pistons right here, you can see there's a perfect gap all the way around them. They look very nice. And if you look at this piston here, you can see that uh, there's a huge gap over here on the side. And I think that side of the piston is absolutely toast. But this thing runs super smooth. 
Got a little bit of dirt that we're still cleaning out that dropped in when the heads came off. But the heads look good. The cylinders actually looked good. This might have been salvageable. The problem all along was there are no replacement pistons. You can try to get them from Audi, but really we would have needed oversized pistons and we would have needed to bore the block and we would have needed to put liners in it. And all of that stuff was custom made and that would have cost more time and money than this ever would have made make sense. I mean, it could have been months of engineering and work to try to do this. I guess I would have been the one guy to save this engine, but I feel like I've still made the right decision buying a new engine. But hey, all the other bores look brand new. I don't see an issue in any other bore. This one's got a little wetness, which is strange. I honestly think this one got hurt the worst. And then right here, there's a little bit of silvering down at the bottom, right there. I don't see that kind of wear in well, a little bit in each of the cylinders. So I guess this is really the only damaged one. And you can see it turned white too, where it probably leaned out back there. These ones have some carbon deposits, look pretty normal. That one is white and the head is white as well. The next order of business is probably pulling the pulleys off the front and then we need to rig this thing, get it back up in the air and pull the timing cover off the back. If you didn't know the timing is all back, I mean, obviously the chains are right here. All the timing is behind this cover where the flywheel sits. So on a lot of engines, you see all the timing up front. Not so the serpentine belts up here, which is honestly normal too, but all the timing is at the back of the engine, making it basically impossible to work on uh, without an engine pull and taking them all the way down. So uh, we're gonna keep taking it down. I think first we might flip it over and pull the pan off and just keep right on going from there. Let's, let's do exactly that actually. So, pop out our pin and we're gonna see a lot of oil on our catch pan here. And all the junk that was in the valley. There was a lot of trash in the valley from the years of use. Hey, there goes the head gasket. All right, let's pop off the oil sump. Obviously, it's very short since this is a dry sump engine. Uh, there's that 12 quart container and the oil pump scavenges all the oil off the bottom, pumps it out to that giant container and it comes back in in a line that's this big supplying oil to this engine to make sure you never have oiling issues. It's pretty important. The oil pan was clearly off of this engine at some time. You can see there's way too much RTV, something the factory would never do, an out of control amount of squeeze out everywhere. And then I found uh, lock washers on some of the bolts that don't deserve them. Those have flats and uh, these ones have locks. And this one was an Allen. And this one is a 10 that's a, a different style, an 8810 with a washer. And that one is kind of an OEM style 10. Whoever worked on this, needs to never work on a car again. That's insane. Why, I, I could see, you know, if, if there's one, but if you're missing that many fasteners, just go buy the fasteners. They're not that hard to get. Anyway, uh, this is an absolute disaster of what not to do when you have to work on a car. I'm sure maybe it had a little oil leak. Oh, you had to tap it for the, they had to tap it for the drain to the turbos. That's what went right there. That's where the oil return was for the turbos. The casting's gonna break. Oh, I can't push anymore. All right, next uh, order of business. We take the forklift, hook the fork under the edge and just lift. This is insane. There's so much RTV. Yep. Oh, we got three ignition. Stop that. We are putting some heat in this thing. If we can get one corner to break loose. We're just gonna catch the RTV on fire. That's the best way. With a lot of heat, I should shut the torch off. A lot of heat. Let that thing bleed down and a chisel. We were finally able to get a gap and get the chisel in here. This is insane. I've never seen an oil pan fight this hard. Good thing it's cast. If it was a stamped pan, Tell you what, this wouldn't be working. It's coming. There it went. Keep going. Oh, gosh, how did this not grenade this engine? That's what I want to know. The pan's so hot. Can't 
grab it. There we go. This is dangerous. If you ever do this to an engine, it's a good way to put an end to it. There's so much RTV in there. I'm surprised that they didn't end it. This is exactly what's going on with all the Subarus uh, right now, or GR86s, whichever one it is, uh, that are dying because they put so much RTV in there. You can even see some right here into this filter. There's some RTV. And uh, they're clogging up and killing the engines in those brand new BRZs. Like, at least, uh, obviously we all know about the super famous case where Toyota has come through and fixed that guy's car, but if you do this, it's on you. That's how you kill your engine. Just a thin little bead, run it or go around each one. That's all you gotta do. All right, you ready to see a real mess? The time has come. This is going to puke oil. Now we've got the oil pump out. It turns out only three bolts hold this on. And this is of course the dry sump oil pump. And I thought I had it, but it looks like there's a shaft that drives it. That's got to come off. I think that shaft is it's right here. And it looks like we got to pull the timing set before the oil pump can actually come out of here. It is very stuck. Here's the counter shaft that drives something in the front. We came to a crossroads. And those were all the timing junks on the back of the engine, like I mentioned earlier, and it creates a big problem for getting it apart if you're using an engine stand. So we couldn't do that. Luckily, I have a big hydraulic engine stand that I can drive wherever I want. So now we can rip off our uh, engine stand head here. These are some monster bolts because they're, I mean, 120 millimeters what it takes to get through an engine stand into an R8 engine. And just in case you guys need to buy bolts for your engine stand. I had to go buy these, of course, because my normal bolts, even though they were the correct metric bolts, are what I use on GM engines and not Audi engines. Now we can get to all these triple squares that are holding everything together. This will probably take no time at all now. So we're gonna just rip this thing apart and see what's underneath door number one. What's underneath door number one is a bunch of clutch dust. That's the answer you were looking for. This back cover should just pop right off. It is RTV'd on as well, but it's factory RTV. Back to the chisel we go. There it goes. Let's see, there must have dowels in it. The rear main seal is what's holding us now. Now we can pull our chains. Gotta remember, these need flipped, right? To go on the, flip them over here. Well, look at all the crazy chains. So I mentioned early on, this is a quad timing chain. Uh, of course you have this chain here. This is the main one. And this one goes to the sub chains that go to the heads, all the cams. And then you have this chain that drives uh, oil pump over here. That's that rod that runs up there. Actually it drives this gearbox uh, assembly and this gear drives the AC compressor and then we will be ready to get the crank out of here and separate the oil pan. We just pulled a ton of bolts out of this thing. I mean, so many more triple squares and T30s. Make a stack here so I can show you guys just how wild it got. So we are seconds away from getting all the chains off of here. We just need to pop that guy and that guy. So we should just about have our, oh wow, that was still under tension. How to lose your fingers right there. Oil pump drive off of here. Okay, I know all this is loose too. So if the chain will drop, we should be all the way out. <laughs> there went that tensioner. And another tensioner bites the dust. We'll put it back together. Got a little spring. 
Uh, shoes chewed up. Lots of chewed up stuff going on in this one, that's for sure. Ah, and there used to be a way to pin this. I see. So if you push this back in, you can put a pin in right there. Keep that tensioner locked. This is the gear drive that runs. Oh, I see. As soon as you pull the pulley off, you're no longer driving the oil pump. So if we put that back and put the bolt back in it, there goes the oil pump. All right. So this is the oil pump drive and all of these other gears here are driving the AC compressor and the other output off the back. I forgot what that one is. But yeah, you can see some really cool gear mesh in there. Super nice. I was putting all this back together to keep track of it and the impact just took right off and started running it like it was the engine. So take a look at this thing running. So cool. So there's your gear mesh back here and you can actually look at the oil pump running now because the impact has tons of torque to run this thing. And you can look down in here, see the auxiliary shafts, probably a counter shaft. And this looks like the main oil pickup right there, I assume. You can really see this thing running. Oh, it sounds so cool. Now that we've got it back together and we got to have some fun running the thing, it should fall right out. Here's our oil pump drive shaft. We can pull the shaft now. Oh, look at that. Lamborghini. So many Lambo parts on this thing. So uh, obviously everything on it's stamped with Lamborghini when it's coming apart, but this is the most Lamborghini stamped one I've seen inside the engine. And with the bolt out of the oil pump, we can remove the oil pump. Man, this is fancy. What a bunch of fancy parts in this engine. So there's the gear drive for that. And you can see down inside her, see all the oiling passages and everything. And now we can start separating this uh, lower pan from the upper pan. And we gotta pull one more, a few more fasteners out, a few more fasteners. Crank pulley's coming off because we're ready to separate the uh, lower pan from the upper. I just wanna make sure there's nothing that I'm missing. This one's all boogered up. Oh, she's on there. And now the lower oil pan is off. That was a nightmare. It took the sledgehammer hitting very hard. The only places you can hit, which are those two bearing races there or uh, bearing housings, which means we can finally get to the meat of this engine here, which is the crank and the mains. We've got a few more T30s to get out of here now that we've exposed them and we can grab some E-Torques and take out all the mains and we can finally see the crankshaft in this engine. And uh, we'll pull the rest of the timing off too. Basically done. All right, there's probably only 50 bolts left in this engine, which is an insane thing to say. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the last chain guide off here. There's two chain guides left really, but you saw the chain pop back right there. Oop. Here's our upper chain guide. Man, these are in there. Okay, we got that clear. And now we can pull our hydraulic tensioner here. I'm just kidding about that. All of these are very tight. I also have this pinned. I used a little piece of copper wire to retract the tensioner. There we go. Another tensioner bites the dust. And I don't know if we can get this off without there we go. We don't have to pull those. This one does not want to come off. Okay, well, luckily I did start pulling this. I can't even use my hands anymore. They're so covered in oil. There we go. Let's go set this down. And now we have a ton of torques on this like windage tray here and a ton of e-torques as well. So we're just gonna power through all these bolts here. Back to the e-torques. We need a bigger impact, check that out. We're gonna have to go over to the, uh, the big girl. And also there's more T30s. So deep down inside here, fastener city.
crazy how much stuff is in the way. I think this is our final speed run. We have the big gun out and it's time to make some magic happen. Man, this thing is relentless. It sure was. We can see the crank finally. What a fancy, a cast windage tray, guys. How insane is that? Only Audi. I guess this is very much an Audi Lamborghini thing in reality. So uh, we got a couple more e-torques left and that should get our pan off. fasteners deep down inside. I think that did it. It's moving. We need a new prize zone. Let's see. There it goes. This is the upper oil pan, but also all of the mains. We got her. Let's add a lever. We can see this thing turn over. There we go. That's what everybody wanted to see. I do not have a 12.10 millimeter in the shop, at least one that I can find right now. So what we did to pull all of the uh, caps off the rods was take a 10 millimeter Icon ratchet wrench, put a pipe on the end of it, that's how strong these are, and break every single one of these loose. And it worked out really, really well. And now we're gonna use an 11 six point and that will have no problem. It's just oversized enough to pop these 12 points out. So as you can see, we have everything out as far as it needs to go. And we can simply run all the bolts out. Thrust washer fell out there. We've got beautiful bore holes there for crank oiling. This is just, it's an incredible build top to bottom. Let's give this thing a little bump. Rods are gonna start coming apart on me. They're already doing it. I'm gonna have to start pulling caps. So uh, we're gonna need a hammer. Give each one of these a little tap, a little love tap. Okay, here comes the back cap. That did it. These rod caps have pins to align them. That is so cool. So cool, Audi. What will they think of next? We've got our pistons out, which means we've got our crank out. There's our beautiful crankshaft. Thrust bearings going everywhere. I'll bag every one of these. And we'll mark them all. There's our thrust bearings right there. They look amazing. The crank looks amazing as you would expect. There's no wear on it at all. It is just a beautiful piece of machined art. No gouging, no scoring. I mean, we weren't expecting any, but it sure looks good. This is our bad piston. This is number seven. And honestly, oh, there's some real wear right there. That's about it. Yeah, we saw some scoring in the cylinder, but if you look at the skirt, it looks good. There's a little wear on the skirt there. This side looks very, uh, okay. I'd say okay. This is definitely our damage, but for how tore up this engine was, it was not that much damage. All right, I'm gonna pull some more pistons out and here in just a minute, we will have this all wrapped up. That is the Audi BYH 4.2 liter V8. Take a look inside this thing. It does look pretty much new. You should see the oil squirters. That's the only thing I was gonna leave. Uh, I figured we don't need to remove those. They will stay in the block for whatever's next for the Fungen. Uh, I guess machine shop might pull them. Probably will have to pull them. We will flip the block over so you guys can take a quick look at the bores. There's so much oil coming out of this thing. All right. And now you can take a quick look inside each of the bores. 
clean all the oil out so there's no weirdness. But honestly, this engine came out pretty well for what I was expecting. The damage was this number seven cylinder. You can actually feel a little bit of the scoring in your fingernail. It catches just a little bit. So that was the problem there. And of course we've got the pistons laid out here so you can see every cylinder in order from eight through one. And uh, although I may, have, I may have flipped this cause that's clearly number seven. But anyway, the pistons are laid out. They're not going with the engine. Crankshaft looks great. We can see the layout for everything else. The Lamborghini gearbox here, pretty cool. And uh, it's time to box up everything over here. And that's gonna go to the guy that wanted the heads. And the rest of this is going in the scrap iron as far as I can tell. So there you have it, complete teardown. And uh, I like we were expecting the engine looked great other than the cylinder that was hurt. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchchairgo.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. I love this layout. It looks really cool. And uh, I was going to clean up all my tools, but I think tomorrow we're just going to do it again on that V6. Uh, it's time to see what was inside that Hydrolock V6, and it should be way worse. We should see some real damage inside that because obviously it stopped running. This thing was still running. It was just uh, puking oil out of the exhaust and burning it as fast as it could. So there you go, the most high-end engine I've ever taken apart. Maybe the most high-end one you've seen inside. Um, maybe we can get our hands on a V12 and tear that up next, one of the Lamborghini ones. That would be ideal.